So Steve, I uh, was curious, we had Erica Wexler as a speaker last night. It was a really great session. What'd you, what'd you get from the session? What were your takeaways? Yeah, well, you know, let's remind ourselves why Erica was there last night. We're going through our mod, model of uh, leadership around Agile. And uh, last night's component was the conclusion of the Agile leader as an active agent of change. So we brought Erica Wexler in, who's a fantastic speaker and a real great practitioner of transforming organizations through change. So Erica was a great guest last night and brought a lot of tremendous content. But for me, there's a couple of things that, that she said that really stuck out. I think the first one was about uh, re-emphasizing this notion that uh, to lead agile initiatives, uh, you have to break down that hierarchical structure of leading. And it's more about being a shared leader, right? That she, she used the term uh, uh, lead by following, leading by following. I thought that was a great way to yep. conceptualize how does the leader operate in a more agile-like environment. It's not about being the, the, the person who drives all of the action. You give, they give the work back to people. Yep. And the other thing that stood out for me was when she talked about curiosity, natural curiosity, leaders who are naturally curious, they have a focus on getting it right and not being right. So I thought those two things right off the top of my head were terrific uh, component parts that really underscored this notion of uh, being a servant leader or a shared leader in agile initiatives. How about yeah. you? What's it out? Well, I, you know, I, I always look at the macro versus micro decision, and I've always been frustrated by a lot of ch change initiatives that weren't successful. In fact, most are not. And I think because, you know, they develop these great enterprise level system, but they don't realize that change is individual. It's personal. And, you know, you're going to ask me to change. So potentially I might lose something. I might get additional work. I mean, you know, what's in it for me? And uh, most change initiatives don't do that because they don't really think about the individual. And each person is different, right? You have 100,000 employees or, or 10 employees. They all have different needs. And so the key is how do you customize it? And I think with the tools we have nowadays, um, it's a little easier to do that. And um, my hope is organizations start looking at the individual in terms of the change person. That's, that's my main takeaway from it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because one of our participants asked Erica the question last night about how do you handle large scale initiatives? And I, she gave a great answer, I thought, which, it, it, you know, underscores how hard this work is, which is one conversation at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that really sort of, to me, lays out the challenge of being a leader in this. This is not easy work, right? Mm -hmm. This is a lot of hard, diligent input done with authentic intention. Mm -hmm. And uh, one conversation at a time is a great way to sort of eat that elephant uh, and uh, be able to to move initiatives. It, it's really about moving people. You know, it's, she talked about having to uh, uh, go for get, get to the behavior that's needed in a change initiative and you just simply can't yeah. mandate it from the top. So I thought that was a really good thing. And the note, the idea of aligning, aligning thoughts, words, and actions and leadership is action, not a position. So yeah. all of those things, I think were really, I mean, such a, a, a great uh, yeah. full hour of content, but just a couple of highlights for me, the, the really advocating for this servant leadership model is so critically important. And she gave a lot of practical tools at the very end, you know, mm -hmm. timing, when do you do it, how you do it, how do you position it? Because, you know, in many ways, change is a marketing program, right? You're, you're really trying to position a change in a positive light for those people that you want to change. And so there's some tactics, tactics behind it, I think, are also effective. But yeah. my bias, again, is it's more of an individual focus, and we need to look at that. So Yeah, yeah. And she did talk about the, the, the importance of influencing relationships. Relationships yep. are so great. Yep. It's not about positional power. It's about yep. influencing relationships, particularly in an agile environment where you're so dependent on, on the goodwill of other people participating with you to co-create the environment that you're working on. So uh, such yeah. great advice that I thought uh, we couldn't have had a better speaker last night, I think. Yeah. Than Erica on this topic, and she's such a great friend and a very good, uh, yeah, uh, willing of to give her time to us. Very, very grateful. Last thing I would add is she talked about you know you can be an influencer of change regardless of your position. Yes, not based on the hierarchy. So a lot of our students are some are executives, some are mid level, and you know a lot common frustration we hear is you know I really can't impact things, and so I think she gave them some tools and, and advice and tactics they could be able to use for that. So that was my takeaway so yeah well i think everybody in an organization you know that they often feel like they're the 
uh, ineffective or uh, not empowered to do things. And I think if anybody who is not a, a leader is not somebody necessarily in formal authority. Yep. Lead others. I think everybody has an opportunity to lead. Yeah. It's how you manifest yourself in your workplace, the relationships you create and what you stand for. All of those things have consequences on how you're thought of and how you develop and grow in an organization. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. All right. On well, thank week. you. It was great. Thanks yeah. very much. We'll talk See next you next week. week. All right.